Once we have a good understanding of the supply and demand theories, we're about to uh, put them together and see the interactions uh, between the two sides of the market. Okay? So on the graph, we already drived, um, sorry, drive the uh, the downward sloping demand curve and uh, upward sloping supply curve. Right, and you would find that you know once we put them on the same graph, uh, there will be a, a very unique place here, uh, which is an interaction uh, between the two curves. Okay, and that um, is very unique because at this specific price, let's call, let's call it P star, we find that the quantity demanded equals quantity supplied in other words um, how much people or the buyers on the market are willing and able to buy equals how much the sellers on the market willing and able to sell okay so um, this specific quantity level here down on the horizontal axis uh, let's label it as q star okay so we're going to define these as the market equilibrium equilibrium in english means balance right means equivalent the two sides are equal okay so that's exactly what we are trying to say you know with uh, this phrase market equilibrium Okay. Sometimes you also heard people saying the market is clear at P star. Again, that means nobody, um, you know, or everybody uh, who wants to buy or sell would be able to do so. Okay, at that specific price, uh, nobody has been left over on the market. And um, so the this one Q D equals Q S is the equilibrium condition. Okay, that's how we find where exactly the market equilibrium is. All right. And um, P star and Q star are equilibrium price and quantity, respectively. Okay. All right. Now, um, in reality, the economists won't believe that the market is always at the equilibrium or the market is always clear. Of course, no. Okay, there are plenty of reasons we could believe or expect that the market will deviate from the equilibrium point. Okay, now that's why here we're going to talk about the surplus and shortage. Now, um, the first case, uh, let's look at the price uh, which stays above the equilibrium price. Okay, now you probably want to know how the price could go up uh, you know above the equilibrium price we're going to talk about that later okay now suppose here again p1 it stays above the equilibrium price okay now at p1 we find that you know if we go to the right and we hit the demand curve here that means oops sorry this point stands for quantity demanded okay if we keep going to the right we find this point that is quantity supplied because it's on the supply curve. Okay. Now we find a gap in between. And this gap, uh, which tells us that, you know, the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. In other words, we're supplied too much. Okay. So this is so called the surplus. All right. And um, if surplus happens, then the sellers or producers, if they already finish production, okay, for example, the restaurant already produced um, uh, more pizza than what the market wants, okay, or needs, then uh, what they could do at that moment is to lower the price. Okay. Once you know the price, you would attract more buyers to buy pizza um, at your price. Okay. When they start lowering the price, um, some restaurants would find that you know it's not worth producing pizza anymore. 
or it's not pro profitable anymore. So they're going to quit. Or some restaurants would reduce their pizza production. Okay. So what we're going to find is <clears throat> because the, you know, um, some firms on the market uh, lowering their price. So the quantity supplied would be um, smaller. So we're moving down along the supply curve. Okay. But remember, when the price is lower, the buyers on this market also find that, right? So they believe that, you know, some of them believe that it's worth buying more pizza, right? Or some of them used to buy hamburgers and or other types of food. Now they find, you know, pizza becomes more affordable. So they want to switch um, to the purchase of pizza. Right. So when people buy more, again, the quantity demanded increases. So we're moving along the curve, uh, moving down along the curve. OK, again, this is a movement along the curve simply because it's caused by a change in the uh, pizza price. OK, now you would find this uh, movement will stop here at the equilibrium point, OK, simply because uh, at that point, uh, the sellers would have no more incentive to lower the price. Okay, what they already produced can be sold on the market. All right. So um, this is the case for surplus. Okay, how we see or where are we going to see surplus, and um, um, how the market uh, by its own can eliminate the uh, surplus. Okay. Now, the second case is let's look at the price level lower than the equilibrium price. Okay. Now, this time when we go to the right, we hit the supply curve first. So that point here on the curve represents the quantity supplied. Okay. If we keep going to the right and find the demand curve, so this is the quantity demanded. Okay. Now, this gap in between is what we call shortage because quantity demanded exceeds quantity supplied okay now intuitively this is pretty easy to understand because the pizza is too cheap okay um, the price is too low so we find a lot of people uh, willing and able to buy it but you know on the supply side uh, the pizza makers find this is not profitable okay so they produce a significantly lower amount of pizzas okay now um if this happens you know if um, we see a shortage on the market you would find that among the buyers some of them will start beating up the price okay especially with these pizza lovers they really enjoy pizza they would like to offer a higher price to be sure they can get pizza Okay. Remember, there's not enough produced. So if they desperately want it, the best way to do that is to offer a higher price. Now, when more and more people are offering a higher price, then we're going to say that, you know, quantity demanded will reduce. Okay. So some people would stop purchasing pizza and buy other things like hamburgers, cheeseburgers, right? Hot dogs. And when the quantity demanded decreases, we're moving up along the demand curve. Okay. Now, on the supply side, when the producers find that the price gets higher, so it becomes more profitable um, producing pizza, they're going to come back and produce more. Okay. So that way, the quantity of supply will go up and we're moving up along the supply curve. Once again, eventually we will go back to this uh, intersection, the equi equilibrium point. Okay, so the point we want to get across here is um, sometimes people would say, you know, the economist um, is just too naive. Okay, we believe the market is always at the equilibrium. The market is always clear. That is the misunderstanding. Okay. We come up with the equilibrium condition uh, or the market equilibrium not because we, we you know, really believe the market is always going to be there. We use the equilibrium 
um, condition as a benchmark so that we can talk about the surplus and shortage. Okay. What's more interesting to us is uh, we believe you know the market by its own can eliminate the surplus or shortage in the long run. So in the short run, we might see some deviations from the equilibrium. But in the long run, we believe this is actually a pretty stable situation. Okay. So, uh, for example, when the price happens to be higher, like P1 here on the graph, and we are going to see a surplus, but the market has kind of the self-correction mechanism. It will push um, the price down and um, to eliminate the surplus. Okay. Um, on the other end, um, if the price is lower, like P2 here, we would find a shortage, but you know the market by itself can uh, increase the market price and eliminate the shortage. Okay, that's why we you know spend a lot of time looking at the market equilibrium. All right. Um, now. Uh, we already finished our discussion about the market equilibrium. On the next video, we're going to start uh, shifting the curves. So it will become more challenging. Okay? And please stay with us. Um, it's more challenging, but you would find more powerful. Um, as we said on day one, later this semester, when we look at the all kinds of policy issues. Uh, most of the time in this course, we rely upon the supply and demand analysis. Right? So it's a pretty important part of the discussion.